Two night cycles previously, at best guess, half of the strike team seated at a table playing a semi-serious game of Darktown Whist. Others were cleaning and maintaining their weapons, some sleeping, but at least it was all of them. Still together. A unit. A squad. A team. Friends. Now? Now only four remained, and the circumstances were most definitely not conducive to playing games. Strafing gunfire ripped through the ruins of the hab block in which they were taking shelter. Everywhere the sounds of death and dying echoed throughout the blasted streets, like a ghastly opera playing to a very small select audience. The traitors of the Mobian Sixth were hammering Chasm Station, but then it felt as though everywhere in Tertium was being hammered, maybe everywhere on Natoma. Vox communication with the other strike teams scattered throughout the sector, and worse with the orbiting Morning Star, had broken down after a heavy stubber shell had punched through the equipment, as well as the man carrying it, and they were running out of places to take cover in the long reaches of Ironside Alley. What's not so good this time, Sarge? muttered Alusha, the team's demolitions expert. Her long black hair, usually wound up tightly beneath her cap, had come loose and hung in strands around her harassed face. She propped her lasgun on the ground before her and frantically took stock of what explosives she had left in her arsenal. Not many. Sergeant Terrell groaned softly, running his hands through his thinning hair. <sighs> His helmet was long since gone, thrown off by the blast that had scattered the strike team in all directions, apart from Karen, whose luck ran out when he'd been too close to the impact to be able to escape the fire and spinning shrapnel. What remained of Karen when the smoke and dust had cleared had not been a pretty sight. An even less pretty sight was that of the big ogring, Tig, as he had cradled his best friend's torso in his arms, trying to convince himself that everything was fine. Karen and Tig formed an instant bond from the moment the Ogren had arrived, newly assigned to the strike team. A big, clumsy mountain of muscle, with the flat, blocky features and overly hirsute body of his kind. He'd come to them comparatively recently. Young for an Ogren, what he lacked in knowledge and social grace, and by the throne he had precious little of either, Tig made up for with single-minded determination, unwavering loyalty and boundless energy. At first the team had only reluctantly accepted his company, but his endless childlike enthusiasm and relentless optimism had quickly worn them down. Within days they had warmed to him. Within a week, none of them could recall the team without him. Overhead, a squadron of blunt-nosed ramshackle attack craft banked sharply to their left with a scream of tortured plasma jets peeling off in pursuit of the remaining Thunderbolt fighters. Tig hunkered down beside Tarrell. The Ogren's face was distorted more than usual, the heavy brow twisted into an expression of abject misery. He had grown close to Karen, a man whose sardonic humor and sharp tongue had savaged the pride of many. Tig was immune to sarcasm and took everything so much to heart that they'd all learned to be careful what they told him to do he would quite literally follow in order to the letter. Fight now, Sarge. The bass rumble of his voice began somewhere deep in the barrel chest, making its way through the vocal cords far more used to shouting battle cries. He was the brute strength of the squad and little more. Not smart enough to be trusted with a firearm, he brandished his serrated-edged war maul with immense pride, hefting the heavy weapon with practiced ease. On the occasions the mole had not been to hand, he snatched up any heavy object and did what he referred to as making do. Rest for a bit, Tig. We need to get our breath back. Yeah, agreed the Ogren, nodding solemnly. Breath gone. Karen gone. Bed gone. Is very sad, yeah. Chasm station broken. Tig fight now while you get breath back. He patted his sergeant on the shoulder awkwardly. Tarrell winced at the heavy-handed gesture, but couldn't hide the tired smile that flickered over his face. Stay where you are, Tig. That's an order. If the Ogren moved out of cover now, he would attract the attention of the recon teams. 
even if there were no enemies on the ground within sight, Tig was large enough that he'd be an obvious target for the traitor aircraft. The Ogren may have been as tough as a commissar's boot, but he was not immortal. Tig scratched at the back of his neck, dislodging a clod of dirt clinging there from an earlier trip into the mud. Tig, fight! He repeated, then his face darkened. It's all Tig can do now. No bed, no Karen, no squad if Tig not fight. His muscles were bunched beneath the surface, and his posture suggested that he was ready to burst from cover there and then. But Tarrell put a restraining hand, for what little good it would do, on the Ogren's arm. No, he said sharply. Tig, stay. He loathed talking to the Ogren like an animal, but it was sometimes necessary. The abhuman understood and obeyed simple commands, and it was how most people spoke to him when they deigned to speak to him at all. Even Tarrell had spoken to him like that in the start. Then he had come to realize that the Ogren wasn't stupid. Not exactly. He simply processed the world around him in a different way, and at a different speed. Maybe it shouldn't have come as a shock, but it had. Over time, that realization had deepened into understanding to the point that he knew he could rely on Tig as much as any member of the squad. Maybe more so, were he brutally honest. Fresh explosions rocked the shell of the Havelock in the ruins of which they were hiding. Debris rained down on their heads. Sergeant Terrell looked over at Alusha and Gorik, the other remaining squad members. They were hunkered down, frantically scooping out foxholes in the debris and making themselves as small as they could in an effort to minimize the chances of being hit by fallen masonry and stray rounds. A spinning chunk of plascrete glanced off Tig's shoulder. The Ogryn didn't even flinch. We need to move out of Ironside Alley, said Tarrell, making a decision. If we can get to the next Clavum, maybe we can contact the Morning Star. We just need an opening. If we can hit Burnside, we can keep moving. We just need those traitorous scum to stop raining death down on us for five minutes. Tig brightened. Tig, fight now! His brow unfurled, and the slightly off-center smile suggested how excited the idea made him. Such devotion was in no small way utterly heartbreaking. His willingness to die in service to the Emperor was commendable, of course. But Terrell was old-fashioned and wanting to very much keep as many of his squad alive as he could. But things were as bleak as they had ever been. The Emperor would understand. Sergeant Terrell reached out and clapped Tig on the shoulder. In a minute, Tig. Just wait a minute. Anusha! Gorik! When we get an opening, we're falling back. Double time. For the Debside drop, and we do not look back. Is that clear? Whatever else happens, keep... Moving. Gorek nodded. Alusha murmured her understanding. Yes, I understand. Tig was already getting to his feet, showering Terrell in particulate dust. Not for the first time, the sergeant felt the guilt and shame of the way some treated at humans. Like idiots. Like fools. Expendable. They were not. They were both more and less than the common soldiery, and there was purity in their service. Tig, fight! The big Ogryn beamed happily at Terrell, who in that instant hated him for it. Just for a moment he considered giving different orders, but strategic options were limited, and half-remembered regulations from before his time aboard the Morning Star gave clear direction for such scenarios. He released his hand on Tig's shoulder and nodded sharply. Any sorrow would have to wait. It would probably have to wait a very long time. Yes, Tig. You fight, my friend. If you can, meet us in Enclave and Baros. But now, get out there and make those carking traitors hurt. That's a direct order. Emperor be with you. <laughs> Tig's rumbling infectious laughter slowly grew softer as he set off at a loping run towards the enemy. Terrell knew there was no way in all the Imperium's million worlds that he'd ever see the Ogryn again. Emperor be with you, he repeated in a low, grim voice. And may he forgive me.